I'm going live. Let me know when I'm there. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our 2021-2022 Bellevue Big Picture Middle School Information Night. I'm Bethany Spindler, the founding principal um, of the Bellevue Big Picture School, and I'll be joined tonight by Matt Stokes, our amazing assistant principal. We have uh, between an hour, hour and a half of information to share with you this evening. I did post in our live Q&A uh, that if you have questions that come up throughout each section, um, please feel free to, to drop those in the chat and we'll do our best um, to answer those as quickly as possible. Um, and then we'll answer additional questions at the end of the event. And for those of you who will be watching this as a recording um, at a future date during our open enrollment period, I um, appreciate you joining us um, and viewing this information at that time. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so first up, if you want to turn on your captions, uh, there's a little CC button in the bottom of your screen that you can click on. And then that'll pop up uh, the captions and subtitles option. And there are six different languages to choose from. Um, so if you want to listen to this uh, in another language, um, please use that closed caption feature and that'll support uh, you in doing so this evening. And again, as a reminder, um, the Q&A box is the place to place your questions and we'll do our best to answer those throughout the presentation. Um, so now that we have that out of the way, um, we're excited to share information um, about our fabulous school and uh, the 11th year of having a big picture school here in Bellevue. Our agenda this evening will focus on um, core aspects of our school, uh, mostly what makes us unique and um, the success that we've had uh, in preparing our graduates for college, career and life. We'll provide an overview what the big picture learning model is. Um, we'll have some staff and student perspectives to share about their experiences here at our school. Um, Matt, our assistant principal, will share information around our academic and our extracurricular program. Um, and then we'll focus on our advisory and our internship program, two really unique feature features of our school. And I'll close our session tonight with more specifics about the lottery process and what enrollment looks like. And if there's still any questions at the end that we haven't answered throughout, um, we're happy to take those questions as well. Um, so it's been a couple times that we've done this uh, presentation virtually now. I really do miss doing it in person and having a cafeteria full of prospective students and families. Um, and one of the questions that I love to start um, with the students, so if you have access to the chat and you're able to just enter this information um, in there, I'm just curious what interests um, students might have. So it might be um, that you're interested in multimedia or finance. Um, maybe you're interested in writing or science, um, music production or music engineering, animation and art or aviation, uh, photography, uh, maybe it's being um, a lawyer or a veterinarian, uh, an architect. There's so many wonderful careers um, that we want to prepare our students for uh, once they graduate from our school. Um, and you'll hear tonight uh, how we build a student's interest um, in what they're excited about and passionate about right now um, into their projects and their coursework and how we help them pursue those interests uh, in our internship program uh, as they enter high school. Um, so again, if you do have access to the chat, we'd love to hear what students are currently interested in. Um, if there's any sports um, enthusiasts out there uh, or students who are really into music or reading or science, um, computer engineering. So feel free to share those. It just gives us a sense of who's listening and our live audience this evening. Um, kind of satisfies my curiosity uh, of what um, fifth graders and other middle school students are thinking and dreaming about. Um, so at Bellevue Big Picture, we're about helping students explore those interests. 
um, as part of our project based approach. We're also about helping students learn how to solve real world problems um, and predict what future problems are going to be. We want to personalize their learning experiences uh, by having our students really well known by their teachers. And we want students to feel empowered in having a voice and leadership in their learning. Um, we also want to help connect them with businesses and the community and higher education. We want to partner with you as parents and with our outside community mentors to support our student learning. Um, we're about creating a diverse, respectful, um, safe and innovative learning environment for all of our students and staff and ultimately for preparing our students um, for successful uh, 21st century careers and college and ultimately um, life in general. Our mission when we were founded um, in 2011 when the school started, um, so a little more than 10 years ago, we wish we could have had a big celebration for our 10th year anniversary, but COVID kind of um, hindered that, but at some point we'll celebrate um, more than a decade here in Bellevue. Um, so our founding mission um, is really to prepare all of our students for success in college and career and citizenship through personalized, rigorous and relevant learning experiences. So you'll hear us touch on how we're personalizing the learning for our students here in 6th through 12th grade, uh, how rigor is being provided and what relevant learning um, really looks like. Um, so I know a lot of you are current fifth grade students or families of fifth grade students, and some of this might seem far away as I talk about graduation and some of the high school components. But I think it's important as we're a sixth through 12th grade school to think about the outcomes that we want to have for our graduates and how that starts all the way back in sixth grade in preparing students for that um, successful transition when they graduate from us. So as we think about college and career and life readiness, um, the attributes that our graduates possess, they're able to use in-depth content knowledge to make connections across subject areas um, and to apply that learning to new situations. They're able to set and monitor progress and goals and reflect on their learning. They can communicate effectively with diverse audiences using multiple modes. Um, they can collaborate with diverse teams. Our students are working on project teams all the time um, throughout their seven years here at our school. Our students are um, re really prepared to be innovative, uh, to analyze, to design and create in a variety of ways and to take action to solve problems, be those problems um, in their local community um, or something on a more global level. We work with our students to be able to direct their own learning and have agency in that learning. We want them to build on their strengths and the unique qualities that they bring to the table right now as they explore their passions. It's important for students to be able to recognize perspectives, both theirs and others, uh, to be functioning um, successfully in our global community, to also analyze cultural influences, connections in different contexts, um, to have empathy and to empathize with others, to explore the world with curiosity and to persist through challenges, um, which our students have certainly had a lot of experience with, uh, particularly in the last uh, now almost two years uh, with the pandemic. Um, there's been a lot of challenges thrust upon our young people here um, and the resilience and persistence that they've developed and shown has really been remarkable. Um, so the core attributes of our program that really uh, help us develop uh, these qualities in our graduates are our internships, our project based learning approach, um, exhibitions, student led conferences and our learning plans. So you're going to hear more about those attributes or those uh, program components um, and how they develop those attributes in our students. So as we look and share, look at and share some of the success that we've had with our graduates, um, we've had an exceptionally high graduation rate. 100% um, of our students uh, from 2015 to 2020 have been eligible for graduation and more than 90% of our graduates enroll in college upon graduation. Um, there's a list of all of the colleges on our website that students have been accepted to um, since the first year of graduates in 2015. Um, this is just uh, a slice, an example of where students have chosen to attend. 
um, for our more recent graduates. So from 2018 through to 2021, um, these are some of the universities that our students um, are presently attending. And as we go to the next slide, you'll see that just specifically for last year's graduates. I know there were many questions and curiosity of the impact of the class of 2021 um, of the pandemic on them and what college would look like. Uh, they had a, a very successful year of applying and getting accepted. Um, we have our first big picture student at my alma mater, which is Cornell University. Even though they're in the national news today <laughs> for COVID, um, it's been thrilling um, for student to be t attending um, where I attended. We have students that are going uh, to public schools, private schools, East Coast schools, Midwest schools, uh, two year schools, four universities, um, the entire continuum really based on um, the interest uh, for students and what sort of program they're looking for uh, and they're being very successful while they're there. And again, the entire list of colleges that have accepted our graduates since 2015 is published on our website if you're curious for more information um, about that college piece. Um, other data that we look at in addition to college acceptance um, in terms of being prepared for life after high school and success in college is the amount um, or types of college credit or other experiences they have while they're here at our high school. Um, so there's a few ways that students can earn college credit that could be via AP classes here. We don't offer very many um, AP classes, um, but students can earn college credit through that pathway. We have students in 11th and 12th grade that earn college credit uh, via Running Start where they take classes at Bellevue College. Um, and we have students that earn, um, right now it's averaging about 20 and a half college credits uh, based on taking classes right here, our college and the high school classes. Um, what really sets us apart from other schools in the district is the exposure that students have to pre-professional occupations. So through a high school internship program, our students are graduating um, with well over 500 hours with experience in a variety of professions. And I'll share more information on the internship program later tonight. Um, and our students are maintaining that rigor right up through their senior year um, and taking college level courses um, here on campus their senior year as well. Other pieces of information that we look at is that transition once they do go to college and what that experience is there. Uh, and I hear frequently from many of our graduates, which is always a delight once a part of our big picture family and community. Um, you stay in it for life, so we love hearing from our graduates. So there's two different perspectives um, that I captured and I think they tell an interesting story. Uh, one from a more academic perspective and one from a more social perspective. So one student shared um, that all of her AP in college and the high school classes classified her as a sophomore at Hofstra when she transitioned there a few years ago. And she was really excited about that because that allowed her um, to take some upper level courses right away and to think about graduating from college early, which was nice for her parents because it saved them some money. And she did all of that by just taking a full course load here at Big Picture. She didn't do any running star or um, any summer courses to get that amount of college credit. Another student who was at the University of Idaho was having a blast and shared that his experience at Big Picture definitely helped prepare him for everything since they've had so many collaborative activities here at Big Picture when he went through the rush process for Greek life. So the social aspect was a little more important to him at that time um, entering into college. He was easily able to talk to new people and make new friends, um, which ultimately led him to being picked by the house that he wanted to be in. And he shared he was also in a studio art class. He had some group projects and he knew how to present their work. His entire group didn't know how to do that and was uncomfortable, but Big Picture prepared him to do that. Um, and just last Friday, I had the wonderful opportunity to catch up with Jackson Robinson, who graduated in 2018 and is finishing his senior year at the University of Oregon. Um, so he'll graduate in a few months with a bachelor's degree in physics. Um, so Jackson was visiting us for a parent coffee um, and we were connect talking about his experience a big picture and what that was like to transition into college and now graduating college, um, the implications moving forward. Um, so he shared that big picture had really prepared him for college, um, mostly in the terms of the way that he was doing 
um, his homework at Big Picture and felt that that was a seamless transition because it was really similar um, to how his coursework was at the University of, of Oregon. He shared he didn't feel caught off guard um, and really um, has sailed through that transition. And because of his internships in high school, he reached out um, and was asked to do an astrophysics internship this last summer and was awarded a full-time uh, scholarship to do his master's work in physics education next year. Um, and he really stressed that the communication skills that he learned at our school helped him a lot with securing those opportunities and scholarships um, as he was able to communicate effectively and navigate that um, and really felt that the PBL, the project-based experience that he had, um, supported him in his, his research opportunity. Um, so we'll continue to track and share information from our graduates from college as that informs our work 6th through 12th grade. And the last um, anecdote that I'll share, I have tons of stories from my kids so I could rave on and on about them. Um, but this is from Kai who transitioned to our school mid middle school. So he didn't start with us in sixth grade, but he came in mid middle school from another middle school in the district um, and was very reflective by the time he graduated in 2017. And there was a, an article in the district news about him and his experience. Um, so I love this quote that he said, I found a community where I could be at home and I could be myself and find out who I was. Um, he goes on to say, when I came to Big Picture, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't really have any concept of my future or where I could go beyond the scope of high school. I think Big Picture very early on helped develop me in, to say, what do I want to do in life and how can I achieve that? That was really vital um, and helped me shape my vision and where I wanted to go. By the time Kai was a senior, he had really found his voice in social justice and film. He had had a few internship experiences in those two arenas and devoted his senior project to creating a documentary on uh, the impact of local Japanese internment and connected it to his personal story um, of bias and harassment that he had experienced um, as a young person here in our community and was advocating for change in education. Um, he's also won an Emmy Award when he was a high school student um, and now is a college graduate um, and working with um, social justice in film um, and then came back to visit us last year. So it's been super awesome um, to hear from our graduates, our college graduates now, and the impact that they're out there making in the world. So a little bit about big picture. Uh, we're actually an international network of schools. There's more than 100 of us around the world. We were the second one here in the state of Washington in 2011 when we opened. Um, and now I believe there's at least 10 um, and more popping up um, every year, it seems. So it's been lovely to develop this national or a regional network of schools right here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, across the network of big picture schools, uh, they have an incredibly high graduation rate, um, greater than 90% and more than a 95% um, of graduates being accepted into college. So the data is really impressive. Uh, the population at big picture schools here in the United States is incredibly diverse. There's small rural schools, there's uh, more urban schools, there's suburban schools like us, there's some that are just high schools. Um, there's a few that are sixth through 12th school, sixth through 12th grade schools like we are. So there's quite a variety um, and a really strong commitment to meeting kids where they're at and serving them um, to be successful as they think about their future beyond just graduation. Um, as a model, this big picture learning model, it's been recognized as one of the top 100 innovations in education um, for a couple of years uh, while that work was being done. Um, this visual that I like, the yellow wheel, uh, which hasn't changed very much, um, I think it really explains the key players involved in a child's experience here at our school. So you'll see that the students are the center of the wheel and they're also on the outside of the wheel. So students are the center of what we do. Uh, learning really uh, revolves around them um, and they're connected to each other. Uh, they're working with their peers and supporting each other in our group projects. Um, they're also connected to um, an advisor. So the blue dot, our teachers here are called advisors. Um, so the advisors are there to support our students and to help them support each other. 
You'll see the green dot as parents. You are our partners in this educational journey for your students. Um, and then you'll also see this red dot as a mentor. So all of our high school students have a variety of mentors in their four years here um, that guide and support them in the internship journey. Um, so those three key adult roles, as well as all of our student population, work together to support a student's journey um, here at our school. One thing that I find really awesome about big picture schools uh, are the amazing opportunities our students have to be leaders. Um, so some of those examples, uh, we've had students that have been leaders with our staff. They've been on our staff development teams and provided professional development to our teachers. Um, we've had students who are leaders in the district office. Uh, they've interned with the assistant superintendent, Eva Collins. They've worked within the district's equity department. They've worked in the safety and security department. We have students that are leaders with students, whether that's with ASB and activities, uh, coordinating spirit weeks, socials or assemblies, or they're serving as peer mediators or involved in our students organized against racism and providing um, workshops on racial equity and sponsoring our day of equity every year. Our students are leadership leaders in the community. We've had students that have started nonprofit organizations, students that have focused on sustainability and a wider range, uh, a wide array of other topics. Um, so it's really, really core to our beliefs here as a big picture school that our students are leaders and they feel they have agency to lead in ways that are important to them. So these key features um, that you'll hear in more detail tonight uh, include personalization, adult world connection, and supportive partnerships. As a small school, uh, currently around 400 students, um, we strive to know every student and every family really well. And certainly by having that sixth through 12th grade continuum, and we're able to stay with families for a long period of time and develop those relationships and really know your students. Our advisory model is one way that we really personalize and get to know students. Um, and support them in their goal setting, their social emotional development, and their academic development. Being a middle school and a high school combined, we're able to support that transition to high school more effectively um, because our teachers work together across the levels. Uh, so ninth grade just seems like the next grade after eighth grade. Uh, it's not a big jump like it is for students who leave from a comprehensive middle school and head to a comprehensive high school. And our students also have student-led conferences twice a year, every year, sixth through twelfth grade, where it's the teacher and the student and the parents sitting down and the student leading the conference um, to share what's going on in their personal um, academic journey here at school. We believe in the importance of the adult world connection starting in sixth grade for all of our students. Um, in high school, that really looks like students having experience through a high school internship program uh, where they're off campus one full day a week every week, all four years, interfacing in the real world of work, um, pursuing things that they're passionate about learning. For our middle school students, that looks like having access to a variety of guest speakers, field trips, uh, college and career projects. We try to bring the outside world in as much as we can. A lot of that is virtual now since we can't have many um, outside people on campus, um, but as hopefully COVID relaxes um, in the coming years, uh, we're able to get our, all of our students off campus and into more of those experiences. Partnerships are equally important to us. That's our partners with our business community for internships. It's our family partnership as we serve um, your children and it's the partnerships with all of the other big picture schools that we can learn um, with each other and support each other in our work. The fourth attribute and feature of our schools are common intellectual mission. That includes our academic model around project based learning, um, which Matt will expand on in a few minutes. Um, it's our approach to grading and assessment um, that he'll also share, which is called standards based grading and assessment, which is school wide. We focus on developing the 21st century skills in students, so communication, creativity, critical thinking and collaboration are woven into our projects right along with um, the content that they are required to learn. Um, and there's an emphasis on racial equity and inclusion for students um, from how we establish our culture in the classroom uh, to how we structure uh, some of the content that students are learning. 
And the last of the five areas, excuse me, is around shared leadership and responsibility. I just shared uh, a lot of examples of how our students are leaders. Um, they're also leaders um, in setting up clubs and our, our pick me up, our PMU assemblies. Um, they work as these district school and community leaders and our staff and our parents are leaders in a variety of different capacities here at school. Um, so leadership is important um, from all those different stakeholder groups. I now have the pleasure of introducing Matt Stokes, who was a math teacher here with us many years ago and has joined us um, three years ago to be our assistant principal. Um, and he's going to share some staff and student perspectives and the academic and extracurricular program. Take it away, Matt. Thank you so much, Bethany. Um, I'd also like to give a quick shout out to Suzanne Reeve, our ITCL, who's working behind the scenes. So thank you, Suzanne, for making this possible tonight. And as Bethany mentioned, yeah, almost 10 years ago, I think in the school's second year, I was um, hired as a middle school math teacher before spending some time in graduate school on the East Coast and then coming back in this role. Um, so it's just truly a privilege and honor to get to see the school in its varying perspectives and to serve alongside Bethany and an incredible staff here, especially in this work of transitioning young people from fifth to sixth grade, which is just such a, a powerful and exciting time um, to make that leap from elementary school to middle school. Before I share lots of what Bethany um, has, has mentioned, um, we're gonna hear from a couple of students and some staff. So. Um, we're going to play a series of videos um, that'll give you a perspective from students who are living the experience and then um, I'll continue to share a little more as the night goes on. Something I like about a big picture student is that everyone it's like a family the projects such the fun projects you got to get to do you know, almost everybody at school and in orientation you get to meet a lot of new people you basically are closer to everyone that you know it's learning with new people making friends with new people the first day i came here at first i was really nervous but then like everyone was like super Get closer to more people and like you really feel like you're like included in people really help you here. The best thing about the teachers at Big Pictures is that they're really understanding and they really want to know about your day. They um, like to make the projects learn fun. They're really nice and they're always there to help you need some extra help on something and they can um, have a conversation with you about it. Um, I guess the best part is that I speak the thing they do you know, they try to teach you how to get ready for what you ready for the real world. The kids workshop is really fun. It's healthy with organization and um, life skills and habits that you should keep. It focuses on what you to do in the future. It's like a get together. It prepares you for life. The best thing about project based learning here is the themes because some of the themes here are really fun. It's a create things and you're using your computer most of the time. It's about making projects and working as a team. The best thing about project based learning is you get to do what you like to do sometimes. But even when you don't, there's still something that you will be interested in. Um, the best part about working in the picture is that you meet new people around the group. It's not the same because every time. Once you're older, or you get like a job or something else, you know, you might work in a group and it helps you build the skills that you need to have in order to work with other people. You could individual parts and teach each other, then it makes you learn easier. You can learn to collaborate with people and you can uh, get to know people better. The community in this picture is really, it's a really I really feel like I belong here. Everyone is super nice. Thank you. We're going to hear one more student in the next slide. 
Hi, my name is Bernie. Um, my favorite project is probably the LA Narrative Writing Story or the Social Studies in that project. A positive memory is probably all the morning announcements that I did with my um, morning announcements team. The reason I really cool here is because I've met so many awesome friends, so many awesome teachers. And yeah, that's it. Bye. Thank you, Maruni. A few quotes when we leverage our relationships with students to get a sense of what's working. Um, what do their experiences tell us about the systems that we're building? And um, as we heard in the video, students describe it being easy to make friends. There's a close community. There's creative and fun, fun projects. These teacher student relationships are one of a kind. Group work gets you to work with others and learn how to function and how you can overcome communication barriers. One of the main reasons students describe loving BP and staying for high school is the project based learning, a through line from sixth all the way through 12th grade. From our hands on projects, small school, there's really a distinctive environment um, that emerges here um, that is cultivated in each of our classes um, and all the events that students experience across um, that six through 12 continuum. So as Bethany mentioned, um, it's important for us to think through kind of what it means not just to transition into sixth grade, but what does this start of your secondary education mean as a high school student? So we're going to get to hear from one more um, student uh, who recorded a video, Hafsa, who's going to share a little bit about high school. Hi, my name is Hafsa Sman, and I've been a student at Big Picture for the past three years. Um, I transferred here in seventh grade, and now I'm in 10th grade. And I think these past three years have been quite the journey, and it's just been a time period of change and growth. I think that it's further been accelerated by the environment that Big Picture gives. And it's just something so unique that I didn't find in any of the other um, schools that I was thinking about transferring to. It wasn't in my old school. And I think that a big part of it is that it just, Big Picture encourages connection, and not just connection within the student body, but connection between teachers, and especially between teachers and students. And it's like a really unique one. Um, and I think that is a big part of why I'm why I am the way I am now and like my academic progress so far I, has definitely um, been affected by the way that you know the teachers interact with me. Um, and advice for any oncoming big picture students, firstly, welcome. Secondly, um, remember that everything is a learning experience. There's going to be ups and downs. And then the thing about big picture is you have a supportive community always with you um, that will help you. That's why group projects are there. That's why the teachers always make sure that you have extra time and you have extensions. Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Afsa. We're now gonna hear from Jamie Ginter as we transition from kind of high school into more middle school elements. Um, who's been our high school or middle school counselor for as long as I've been affiliated with the school. So wealth of knowledge. Without further ado. Hi, I'm Jamie Ginter, the middle school counselor at the Bellevue Big Picture School, and I just love working here with our students. The collaboration they do with each other, the problem solving, as you know, middle school is a time of social development. Um, often conflict with peers, changes with peers, and working with them through it is, it brings me so much joy. Align with them, to support them, to um, help them identify how they're feeling and to cope when things are uncomfortable. Learning is not always comfortable and often it's that discomfort um, or the time we're in conflict with our peers where we're learning the most and our small school environment and projects allow kids to do the social and emotional work along with the kind of learning in really powerful ways. So I just can't say enough about how great it is to be a part of this wonderful community. Um, small schools really provide an opportunity for people to connect and know each other in ways um, that are really powerful. So thank you for listening and I hope you consider coming to Bellevue Big Picture. 
Thank you, Jamie. So the next kind of few minutes, I get to talk through some of the ways that big picture supports the development of, kind of pro-social and academic skills in young people. Um, we're going to start with what the middle school academic program looks like sixth through eighth grade. Um, as you'll see, there's a great deal of consistency across the middle school, um, on our ELA classes, our social studies classes, our math classes, and our science classes. So all students will transition um, as well as advisory between sixth through eighth grade across that core curriculum. And then um, throughout sixth grade, um, students will um, switch between PE and health um, semesters by semester, um, as well as an art class. Um, the asterisk here is if students have sp um, specifically designed instruction within their IEP, um, a study skills class may fit into one of these electives as well. Seventh grade um, students then have access to a either coding class or um, the PE um, and video as well, um, including Spanish um, as our language of study, um, drama or studio art, which carries between seventh and eighth grade. Um, and then in eighth grade, the specific elective is pretty similar. Our high school program, um, is uh, in a lot of ways um, holding down what that kind of consistent high school expectation is, um, including all of our graduation um, requirement courses. So students are going to take six academic courses and an internship each year for seven credits per year. Um, Spanish is offered as the world language here on site. There's opportunities for college credit, which are grounded in our AP classes or college and high school class. Um, our Academic program also includes beyond kind of those um, kind of more foundational elements are our senior project as well as the defense um, and then opportunities for electives including PE, health, photography, art, design, guitar, composing music, theater, arts. Uh, these electives can change depending on uh, student interest. So our schedule um, includes a block class. Um, now this extends the time that students are in a particular class at one um, particular period of time. So our block classes are on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So on Wednesdays you'll have three classes and on Thursday you'll have four classes and then you'll have your seven class periods on Monday and Tuesday and Friday. And that allows for teachers to build in some really essential collaborative um, kind of community time to make sure projects have um, you know, calendared and sequential opportunity to really lengthen and deepen what students get to experience. Um, high school has you know, similar but slightly different schedule. Um, and the main difference there is the last line and that on Thursdays, students have made the choice um, to attend the picture and therefore the um, decision to participate in an internship. So on Thursdays, students will leave to learn in a supported and guided and structured um, internship um, that will carry through um, not only to their kind of core classes, but as well as their advisory class. Um, high school, similar eight to three. Similar to middle school, as you will have um, all of your classes Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, as well as a rotating block um, of classes as well. So we think about your transition to all middle schoolers um, or future middle schoolers in attendance. Um, your probably first real experiential um, time at Big Picture will be our sixth grade orientation. And so uh, here's an example of an art project that was created by our um, current sixth graders in their orientation in late summer, um, early fall. Um, and it's a really incredible time to meet the students that you're going to be sharing your math classes with, and you're going to be completing science projects with. Um, and they'll this day will be structured um, across you know, kind of five or six different classes, which are just experiences led by your future middle school teachers. And so it's just such an incredible time for the adults to, to meet you all for the first time. Um, and to watch young people meet each other from all throughout the district. Um, and uh, after having been you know, apart from your fifth grade classmates all summer, it's certainly uh, just a blast to watch the noise and the excitement and the laughter, uh, to watch those friendships form, um, oftentimes are lasting. So when we zoom out and think about some of the social development, um, sports are, um, as we know, a big part of uh, young people's experience. And so there's two different ways that students participate in athletics. Middle school um, is currently supported by Jubilee Reach. And so Jubilee site coaches um, will coach uh, a range of sports throughout the seasons from soccer to golf, to like football, cross country, basketball. 
oftentimes some specific clubs by Jubilee as well. Those are um, kind of intercollegiate of sorts. So your middle school sports will compete against other middle schools. For example, our flight football team got on the bus today over to International um, to play in a flight football game. A little bit different um, as Big Picture does not have a its own high school sports team. Um, our comprehensive schools um, are where our high school students participate in sports and you will um, are allowed um, if that's um, an interest of yours, uh, encouraged if that's something you want to do um, and your sport will take place at your neighborhood school. So whatever your attendance zone school is, is where you'll participate in sports. When we think about what extracurricular programs look like outside of that athletic lens um, kind of the, the our clubs um, really take shape both during lunch and after school and are a reflection of our student interests um, and so a range of clubs here that are are presented are both past and present um, everything from supporting the yearbook um, to participating in green initiatives to art club guitar club hack club um, some of these clubs have some um, kind of more adult um, kind of uh, not incorporation to make sure that each year we have a SOAR club, students organizing against racism or a yearbook club. Other clubs are entirely driven by what student interests are in this moment. So if you as a student are excited about spending some time after school with a group um, and learning about financial literacy, a club was formed this year in, in that honor. If it's to watch and think about um, world of anime. Um, all you need is a small group of friends, um, a completed uh, packet, ASB approval, and your club can begin. Um, so we really encourage students um, and families to look at this list and think not only of the things that you're excited about, but also the things that you might not have experience in. And to really round out what it is to be a student might mean participating in a club that's new to you. Our more um, kind of eight to three um, our, our school structured events that um, exist here at Big Picture um, include things like our talent show or our multicultural dessert night. Um, we have advisory grade level competitions, um, our PMU assemblies, which you'll hear more about in a little bit, um, math competition, PTSA reflection contests, cookie and cocoa and donut socials and recognitions to dances and proms and senior breakfasts. Um, as we talked about sixth grade orientation, a day of service where we you know, get to kind of leverage that scientific fact that giving is a really powerful way to feel good about ourselves and also support the community in which we live. Um, we also have spirit days um, and drama performances. Our first one in our first in-person drama performance in many, many months took place um, last weekend, uh, which was just exciting to watch theater and families come together in the honor and celebration of arts. So we're going to get to hear now from this sixth grade advisor on these pick me up assemblies. Weekly events help bring our community together. Hello, I'm Erica and sixth grade advisory. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys about PMUs. PMUs. It's not, they're not PU, PMU. So these stand for Pick Me Up. Uh, they are our weekly um, assemblies for middle school. Um, we meet usually every Tuesday morning for about a half hour in the cafeteria and we have um, a big get together. So usually you sit with your advisory class and um, there's usually a theme for the day. Um, we tend to talk about people's birthdays or um, special um, events that are coming up on the calendars, uh, try to give recognition to students, and we try to get students to be involved and to lead these. So get ready for that eventually. Um, so you sit with your advisory class. Um, usually there are um, there's some sort of activity, maybe like a competition between advisories. Um, might have a minute to win it games or um, we've done telephone trades which are always really fun um, sometimes there's guest presenters from outside of bp or inside bp different teachers or students coming to talk to you guys um, so games activities 
Uh, we like to get students to leave this eventually, um, and there'll be many opportunities for you to jump in if you have any ideas. Um, let's see. And the purpose is to come all together, to be a group of middle schoolers, to um, to touch base and to um, just enjoy each other's company and to have fun. Um, it's a nice little break in our Tuesday to, uh, to do this. So PMUs, enjoy. Thank you, Erica. Here's some picture from some past uh, PMUs. Currently, um, we've organized these in a virtual way where you spend time with your advisory class um, and kind of log in to our PMUs, but um, soon we'll be back again um, kind of as, as a community and whether those are built around dance or music or guest speakers, um, it's just an incredible way to kind of invite the world in. Um, I will note that we have um, kind of Veterans Day assemblies, Gloria Henderson spoke this year, MLK assemblies, so we can kind of anchor these PMUs around um, where we are um, in the calendar year as well. Outside of PMUs, uh, just a way to celebrate, you know, our humanity um, while being, you know, uh, our inner community is our spirit week. So we always make sure our ASB team has the opportunity for us, whether it's to dress in 80s theme or dress like a teacher um, or as your favorite mu movie character, um, the opportunity um, to just be a little bit silly, live in character um, as we move through the seven period days. Our current fifth graders, junior, senior prom must seem like a long time away. And parents, I know there's probably lots of feelings about what it means to have your child you love at uh, at a you know and such a significant traditional event like prom and all dressed up and grown up, um, but that will soon come. And so, um, when we think about what it means to be a student, big picture, it is to look at these um, real memorable events. Um, what is somewhat different than um, may occur at a, a larger school is our senior recognition. Um, as a uh, high school student, you'll carry through the same advisor for four years. Um, and so our senior recognition is an awesome opportunity for both your middle school teachers, um, admin and office staff to come together to hear your advisor share um, unbelievably sentimental and, and powerful and encouraging words about the transition between freshman and senior year. Not a dry eye in the house every time. A lot of our students graduating have spent all seven years of their secondary education together. And so we want to honor that experience um, toward the end of your senior year by giving yourself a retreat. And it's somewhat structured, but also reflective to your voice and your experience um, and to share and honor the time that you've gone through from your first project in science um, to finishing, you know, maybe your fourth or fifth internship um, and what it means to transition into whatever post-secondary education looks like for you. I get to spend a little bit of time here as we shift from kind of those more cultural um, events of being a big picture student to our curriculum. What does learning look like and feel like on a day-to-day -day basis at Big Picture? Eric is here to, um, in spirit um, with a video to share a little bit about PBL and then I'll continue after she wraps. All right, another acronym, um, PBL. That stands for project-based learning. That's something you're gonna be doing a lot of here at Big Picture. Um, so you remember back in the day, you would take tests and quizzes to show that you were learning the stuff the teacher was teaching, right? Um, here at Big Picture, instead, um, you'll be making a lot of projects to show your learning. Uh, you'll take tests and quizzes too, but um, the big new thing for you will be making projects. Um, be prepared to work collaboratively. Uh, a lot of our project work is collaborative based, so you'll be working with a bunch of your peers on a project. Um, also be prepared to think creatively. Um, you get voice and choice a lot of the time, um, so you get, you get a grade on creativity and um, you get to show what you do best. Let's see, what else? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo, going through my list, I have a little list here. Um, so you'll get to show your learning and um, what you've got out of lessons um, through a project. Um, it lets you showcase your work and often there's a public product at the end. So your project is the product. Um, it's either shown to the public 
of big picture. So like in school with other peers and other classes, other grade levels get to see your work. Um, or often you present to people who are outside of big picture. So sometimes we have guests come in from um, various companies or um, organizations to come see what you've done. So that's pretty cool that you get to show off in that way. Um, yeah, so project-based learning. Most of your classes you'll be doing that in um, alongside of quizzes and tests. Um, this is a big part of big pictures, project-based learning. Thank you, Ms. Iris. I really want to focus on what Erica said there around PBL is this idea of what you do best. Um, and it reminds me a lot of that quote of, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it'll never know its strength. And PBL really is built around this idea of how do we allow young people to demonstrate their learning in all of our content standards in ways that are grounded and reflective of their strengths. And so our PBL kind of more pragmatic elements is all of our projects um, here are aligned to state and common core standards. They're centered on open-ended, authentic design challenges. Um, and the content learning is motivated by this need to solve problems and answer questions. Students will work together work collaboratively, um, you know, think about each other's ideas to revise solutions. Um, and we really wanna honor that every student has a role and gets to contribute um, to support the group's success. Um, and those students will produce a final product um, and ideally evaluated um, in, a, in a public way um, and by rigorous standards. So there is a framework um, and this framework helps lead us to some really cool experiences with students. Um, our projects have led us to places like the Treehouse, um, Treehouse Point, um, and students are using geometric um, understanding to create models of tree houses. Um, students in science classes will demonstrate understanding um, oftentimes by way of their experiences and connect real life um, you know, learning back to core curriculum. Um, we want to make sure students get the opportunity to be out in the field um, and get to touch science and feel science and experience how things move. Um, and as I mentioned a little bit ago, this idea of a, a real life audience of that, that we all have, regardless of age, something to share with the world. Um, and so we get to make sure our projects have the eyes and the ears of, of the community. Um, next, um, we get to talk a little bit about, as we transition, um, our specific classes from both Nicole Schneider and Bailey Edgley. Hello, Big Picture students and families. My name is Nicole Schneider, and I'm a sixth grade here at Big Picture. Um, I teach language arts. I wanted to give you a little sneak peek into the kind of projects and things we'll be studying in language arts. So in the fall, we start by learning a little bit about figurative language and story elements, and then we jump right into writing our own personal narratives about an event in your life that has impacted you in some way. So you'll be writing about that and hopefully entering them into a national story writing contest and getting them published. Then we'll move on to a novel called The Confessions of Charlotte Doyle, where Charlotte takes us through um, a firsthand account of sailing across the Atlantic Ocean. And in that novel, we'll discuss themes of gender inequality, racism, social status, and abuses of power and students will be writing articles, you all will be writing articles in the Panther paper about some of these issues that are still relevant today. Next, we'll be reading Code Talkers, which is a story about the lives of the Navajo Marines in World War II. And for that project, you and your classmates will be publishing a podcast together. Then towards the end of the year, you'll transform into literary critics and run your own literature circle with your and next we have, apologize for the technical piece there, is Bailey Edgley, who will share a bit about middle school science. Hi, I'm Bailey Edgley. I teach seventh and eighth grade science, and this year I'm a seventh grade advisor. One of the things I love about Big Picture is we're a small community and we get to know students and their families and staff very well. Um, 
families I'm working with this year. I've had one or two of the older siblings, but I really like that we get to know students and what works best for them and how best to support them. Some of the really cool projects we do in middle school science, we have a Rube Goldberg project where you make your own Rube Goldberg device. When we're on campus, we make a mousetrap car for eighth grade science. Um, when we're off campus, we do some virtual things. But um, in the seventh grade science, also you have an opportunity to study chemical reactions and you get to study plate tectonics and the rock cycle. One of the seventh grade projects is actually called Rock Show. You get to adopt a pet rock and parade it around like the, uh, the pet show, those famous pet shows where they walking around you to do that with your rock and then you make up a life story for your rock and how it went through all the different parts of the rock cycle. So big picture is great. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Bailey. Our middle school projects will lead us to kind of the bigger um, projects, which include things like our chemistry escape room night, uh, which is not only a fundraiser for prom, but an opportunity to experience um, students projects and thinking in a way that resembles our escape room. And so we're solving problems and challenges um, in order to the opportunity to escape. Our AP environmental science um, classes will focus on projects related to sustainability using our garden. Um, we've often connected with the Bellevue Urban Garden down the street. Um, our physics of the universe um, class, um, which is you know a, a class that collaborates with the University of Washington curriculum. Um, well, make sure that we're out there in the field experiencing science in authentic ways. Our art projects include things like our scary comedy shorts, um, personal narratives, PSAs. Um, we have uh, a corporation of website design, watercolor painting, and a global art exchange um, with young girls in Afghanistan, um, as well as concept of measuring histories. Our photo classes have participated in endangered and threatening species, graphic design projects, and a self-portrait. Our high school freedom project is a period of time where we've kind of taken a multi-year experience of, of thinking creatively, um, thinking about curriculum in a way that's um, demonstrative, um, and we get to stop and pause and say, you as a learner, what is it that you want to spend some time thinking about? And so students get to spend some time learning all of these skills of demonstrating understanding, of building, of creating, of designing, coding, um, public speaking, writing and present it. Students have learned to weld, done architecture, build computers, created video games, written books, created graphic novels, designed apps, um, all of connection to their experience as big picture students. Part of the learning experience is assessment and our projects are an anchor around those assessments. And so we think about standards based grading um, and Kind of the overlap between a project is this idea of what is the explicit standard we need students to understand and recognizing that any way we assess student has both kind of an implicit and an explicit um, understanding and how do we allow that kind of implicit experience to reflect students passions um, their skills their experiences all the things you labeled here whether it was anime or culinary arts um, can we tie curriculum to those skill sets that you have and those passions and um, that exist? And so you'll demonstrate progress in a variety of ways um, through projects, sometimes tests and essays. Um, you'll have exhibitions where your work is shared. Um, you'll often present this to as well your, through your internships and in middle school to audiences composed of our community members. And in spite of the fact that our kind of learning might look and feel a little different, Everything is grounded in these state standards um, and we still comply with and complete all state assessments. Our standards based grading really allows you as a student to think critically is about what is it that I need to demonstrate my understanding of. And it also is grounded in this idea that if a standard is experienced in September, we may have a couple of weeks until we really feel like we've formed a complete understanding of that standard. And we'll get to work with our teachers to share that understanding of standard that is not based on a timeline set forth explicitly by kind of the teacher and or the scope and sequence of that class. And so it really allows young people to recognize that, you know, in this point in time, I may have some more to learn and that's okay. And 
what is the opportunity connecting with the teacher to demonstrate that learning? That might look like a test. It might be a range of other mediums and experiences as well. So there's a couple of projects that are demonstrated here. But I just want to re really reiterate this kind of really unique concept about choosing to be a big picture um, is that learning um, is not entirely grounded in that cycle of a teacher gives knowledge and the students give knowledge back. Um, teachers have a really rich and complex understanding of what it is students need to know and how are we supporting experiences for students to demonstrate their understanding. Um, and it's it's as an adult, as a former teacher, um, it's just a really impactful environment that to watch young people demonstrate knowledge and to experience learning um, in a variety of ways. Part of that um, will kind of live through um, are the ways that our student support program works. Um, and so outside of our kind of four wall classrooms, there's a range of um, kind of both here and adult support that exists. This starts with our ELL support, our special education programming. We have tutorial four days a week. Um, we have a math and literacy support in our middle school advisory program. Um, we have a study skills component that lives in advisory to help make sure our executive functioning um, skills are developing along with our kind of curriculum knowledge. Uh, we'll have volunteers in our classroom. Um, we have student-led conferences twice a year, which is a really unique opportunity for students to, to sit alongside their advisor, alongside their adults in their life, and lead their own conversation about what it is that they're creating, what it is they're designing, what it is they're learning, and how they're reflecting on their experience as a student. As Jamie mentioned, when we bring groups of people together, sometimes we have to work through some social conflict. Um, we like to incorporate peer mediation as well as guidance counseling and social and emotional curriculum, all to help make sure that those student experiences are healthy and honors dignity along the way. We think through things like restorative practice and our positive behavior intervention systems um, so that when make mistakes are made, we offer a space to reflect on it and use every element of it the young people's journey throughout middle school as an opportunity to learn. New this year is our MHAT counseling team. Um, so our mental health team has been um, expanded district wide. We're very fortunate to have an MHAT counselor alongside our counseling team. Part of the work I get to help lead is our all around school culture. Um, and so some of these live throughout our virtues of what it means to kind of prowl. Um, and we honor all possibility, positive relationships, our ownership of learning and our leadership. And there's an example here of kind of this token economy, honoring students through those virtues um, by way of a prowl slip. And those can be exchanged um, in a couple of different ways. It might be just a simple exchange for a starburst from your advisor, or you might save those up for um, some sort of fidget toy, or you may enter into a drawing for Bluetooth headphones, but it's a way to help make sure young people know that um, we're honoring their work of demonstrating the values that we want to anchor our culture in. We want to honor students of the month, um, so our assemblies will open space for us to honor students' achievements, both kind of relationally, social emotionally, um, as well as academically. Um, we know that the journey throughout middle school and high school um, especially under the circumstances we've been in where we've spent part of that at home, is under unique challenges. Um, so our teachers and our front office staff, um, our administration, we really believe in this concept of what is it to celebrate um, the growth and the achievement and the bravery that students demonstrate each and every day, both in the spirit of learning, but also in sharing time with people um, from all throughout the community. So as I close here before I get to transition back to Bethany to share a little bit more about advisory um, and our LTI program, um, I just want to thank our parent and our adult community, the guardians of our um, students uh, as a part of this entire process. Um, you are our partners. Um, you are and your experiences um, are drawn on and often leaned on and included in what it means for our students to be students here. Um, you're going to help develop students' personalized learning plans. You're going to be a part of their student-led conferences. Um, 
we want your voice and we want your perspective to play a role in your students enrollment all the way through graduation. Um, so we can't wait to meet you um, and we're excited to partner with you to make sure the student in your life is the very best secondary education you can possibly provide. Thank you very much for taking some time to listen and it's a privilege Bethany to pass it back to carry us through the remaining of the presentation. Thank you Matt. That was great. We're in our home stretch. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about advisory in middle school and our learning through interest in high school. Just give you uh, a taste of what that looks like as a super unique feature here at Big Picture. Um, so Laura, sixth grade advisor, is going to share um, an overview of what advisory looks like for incoming sixth graders. I'm Laura Walter. This is Jackson. He's my three and a half month old. We're in his nursery right now, so bear with me. <laughs> so I'm gonna be talking to you about advisory. I am one of three advisors for the sixth grade. So what is an advisor? An advisor is kind of like the parent at big picture while you're at school, if you will. So our role is to support you um, to help you with a lot of different skills like organization. Um, we help you with your grades and making sure that you're getting everything that you need. We're also kind of the communication in between home and the school. So you'll actually do your student led conferences through your advisory or your advice with your advisor. Your advisor is also going to be your teacher for advisory class during seventh period. What is advisory class? So advisory class has a lot of different roles. The first one being kind of a support group. So your, your advisory is kind of seen like a family. You come up with a group name, you come up with a mascot, and the group travels together from sixth all the way to eighth grade. So you get to know each other really well. The first few weeks, usually we just kind of help with the transition into sixth grade. Um, we learn all the different technology, how to use your computers, how to use them correctly and safely, um, how to use OneNote, OneDrive, Teams, all of those different programs that you're going to be using on a regular basis at Big Picture. In addition to doing technology, we also do projects. So we'll start out after technology with the Who Am I project where you get to dive in deep and really figure out who you are, um, your past history, your culture, and really get to know your different learning styles. It's a pretty cool project. After that, we go more into looking into the future with our college and career project. So you think about and brainstorm different careers you're interested in, um, narrow it down to one, and think of what steps you have to take in order to get to that career. We end the year usually with a community service project. So that project is looking at ways that you can help out your community locally. In addition to all the projects and organization that we do within advisory, we also do grade checks. Grade checks usually happen on Friday, and it's a great time to brainstorm and create different goals for either maintaining or increasing those grades. So advisory is really going to be that, that supportive family that you're going to really get really close with throughout the year. Here's an example of my awesome advisory's um, mascot from last year. Hope you enjoy. Pretty cool, huh? We actually did the wave during the PMUs, which was pretty awesome. Well, I'm really excited to meet you and I can't wait till the fall. Bye. Thank you, Laura. I always enjoy hearing the little baby noise in the back um, of her video. So just some key components of our advisory scope and sequence. Uh, Laura touched on many of those in her video. Um, there are those tech lessons um, and some attention to executive functioning um, to help students um, adjust to having seven periods and multiple classes and multiple teachers. They'll do a variety of projects from a compassion project to a successful person project and a who am I project. There's a service learning project um, and various pick me up assemblies to help build our school community. Each year there's a project in middle school advisory focused on college and career and various as aspects of that in preparation for transition into high school and our internship program. 
We deliver our social emotional learning lessons um, through advisory primarily, and our students will focus on goal setting um, and monitoring their academic progress through our student led conferences held twice a year. And then currently we're providing math and literacy support through a workshop model that happens two days a week in advisory. In middle school, you'll start in a sixth grade advisory and have Laura, Laura, Erica or Nicole that you've seen tonight as your advisor. When you enter seventh grade, your advisory class will stay together for the next two years, but you'll get a new advisor who will loop with you in seventh and eighth grade. And then as you transition to high school, you'll be in a ninth through a twelfth grade mixed advisory this time, and you'll stay with the same group and the same teacher for all four years of high school. I have a couple pictures to show coming up. The first is just um, some examples of the Who Am I project in sixth grade, where students will do a presentation of various um, aspects of their life that they want to share with the class. Um, the middle school college visits we put on hold for a couple years during the pandemic, but hopefully we'll get back to those this spring. Um, sixth grade typically goes to Bellevue College. Uh, seventh grade has gone to Seattle Pacific or Seattle U, and then our eighth graders will make a trek um, over to UW, usually in the spring where there's the beautiful cherry blossoms. Um, always a favorite picture and time of year to be there. Uh, the day of service we've put on hold too for the last couple of years, but hopefully we can resume that um, where each grade level goes out to uh, many different sites in the local community to help with gardening or food drive. Um, one group was at an equine rescue facility. Um, it's a beautiful miniature pony there that we love to take pictures with, so it's important to be able to give back to our community um, because they give so much to us. Um, so just some examples um, of what happens in middle school advisory. So up next, I'm just going to give you uh, a little bit of information around our high school internship program. Is that all that work in the middle school advisory really feeds into what high school internship piece, the internship um, portion of our school is about, uh, which is a super unique aspect um, and it really an anchor to all big picture schools in the world. Um, so Tony and Barb uh, support our program um, as the internship coordinator and our community partnership coordinator. Um, and you'll just see some pictures throughout here that we'll move through of students at a variety of different sites. Um, it could be in teaching at a preschool, at a digital media firm. Um, we've had a student at Code Fellows, at KPFF Engineering, um, vet hospitals, the Museum of Flight, the Burke Museum, we had a student intern with the Seattle International Film Festival. Typically, there's one or two students um, at the Museum of Flight each year. Uh, we've had students work as programmers within our district, um, do some work at Quantum, which was a great internship for Dominic when he was in ninth grade. Um, and I'll share a few more in a second. Um, so what is this internship piece or learning through interest, LTI as we call it, really about here? And what does that look like at our school? So first and foremost, that's about ultimately developing student agency for students to have confidence um, and take charge of their learning and the direction they want to move in their life. It's an opportunity for students to learn more about a variety of career fields that are of authentic relevance to them. So it's unique to each student. It's a place for students to create rigorous learning projects connected back to their work here at school but ultimately embedded in what is really happening um, outside of school in these places of business. It's a place where students can learn from and develop a relationship with another adult, the mentor in that yellow wheel that I spoke about earlier in the presentation. Um, the work on developing workplace and transferable skills that will assist them in college um, and in future careers. And this happens every Thursday for the entire school day, um, all four years of high school. Um, our students are working on developing these 21st century skills I talked about, the communication, cre creative thinking, critical thinking, um, collaboration in these real world settings, moving beyond just theory in a classroom. They're connecting real world work to the academic learning goals and seeing um, that transference of here's what I learned in math class today. How do I really use quantitative reasoning um, in this particular job or profession? It's going to help our students have a better idea of pathways to take through college. Uh, Jackson, who I spoke about earlier, uh, the student at the University of Oregon, 
um, engaged in a variety of engineering um, internships and his experience here um, as a high school student that ultimately helped him solidify that physics um, and astrophysics was a direction he wanted to pursue. We want students to be super engaged and empowered in directing their own learning. So finding an internship that's most relevant to them is important and developing positive relationships with other adults um, to increase that circle of support around them. Um, here's some places that our students have interned uh, over the years with us. There is uh, quite an extensive list posted on our website on the FAQ page as well um, of all the locations where our students have been. So our community has been just tremendously supportive um, in welcoming high school students uh, into their career spaces uh, to guide and support them. And once there, uh, students are earning academic credit. It's under career and tech credit required for graduation. Um, they have to create with their mentor and their teacher advisor projects um, to do. Um, and then they participate in an exhibition um, to showcase their learning and reflection of the projects. Um, so students might be running um, social media at a company. They might be part of um, an engineering project that they're developing right alongside the professionals there. Um, they might be completing ocular research, um, designing and building a submersible robot. That was actually what Jackson was working on for his freshman year um, experience. They might be creating independent films, designing video games. Um, we have a, a group right now working with Microsoft and Xbox on a variety of different topics associated um, with that organization. So there's really cool projects that our students have uh, the ability to work on. Um, here's a couple more examples. Um, Anjani uh, created an original film in her time as an as an intern here, um, which won her several awards. We had a group that started a nonprofit and they were actually selected to present um, at South by Southwest EDU in Austin that year um, in their entrepreneurship showcase um, for starting their own nonprofit organization. Um, here's another snapshot um, of that group um, and then they pass that internship on uh, to the next year's group and so on so they could keep their nonprofit going even though they had graduated and moved on to college. Um, the last thing that I'm going to share with you, there's several videos on our website. Um, I encourage you to check those out if you want to hear more voices from our students um, that we have a couple minute video of when Nick was at the Museum of Flight and you'll hear from him and his mentor about what that experience looked like and then we'll wrap up enrollment. Always had a really big interest in airplanes and my dad had a really big influence on this considering the fact that he works at Boeing. Every time I came here I remember I loved seeing and being surrounded by all these aircraft and inventions. Being here, learning about them and just being with and around them is just a great feeling. Nick is a great intern. Uh, he's able to doing his work helping out um he's we've roped him into a couple of things hey you're the you're a token young person sitting around the office what do you think of this activity do you like it is it cool <laughs> he's always willing to give his feedback so it's, it's great to have him around what part of the museum i am in is called the living history where people mostly volunteers uh dress up in character as i am now and portray a person from history real or fake I had to do a lot of research on Joe Foss, and uh, I had to read about his past, his history. Him and his father would always go uh, watch the acrobatic plane pilots. I would have a clipboard and a letter right in front of me with a pencil or pen, and I would pretend like I was writing something and erasing and writing and erasing until people walked past me. Then I'd gently get their attention and ask them if they would like to help me revise and edit my letter to my friend's parents. I think the most rewarding part of being a mentor is being able to see the kids have that aha moment of, oh, this is how I can use what I learned in school. Uh, this is how I can use my writing skills, or this is how I can use what I know about how to fix a car or, or anything like that and apply it to their life and their work. Learning things at school and outside of school now is really helping me to be able to 
to learn and understand things a whole lot better. Here, you're just free to learn about anything you can and want to. At school, they don't ever teach you about planes themselves, so I'm learning a lot about those. I became a big picture mentor because students came to the museum and wanted to work here at the Museum of Flight, but I became a museum educator because I'm uh, really passionate about helping kids learn about aviation and about how what they're learning in school relates to what they might do with the rest of their lives. Um, becoming passionate about learning things that they can then go on and do things with. So that's a great tie-in with uh, mentoring interns, helping them take what they're learning in the classroom and apply it to everyday life. I think this builds my confidence presenting mostly because whenever I'm up in the gallery, I'm talking to complete strangers I've never seen and I'll probably never see again. My internship was kind of difficult at first, but it just gets easier and easier as I learn more and time goes by. Time goes by. It's difficult at first. It's presenting mostly because whenever I'm up in the gallery, I'm talking to complete. Sorry about the technical difficulties there with our video. I love watching that um, each time we show that of Nick. Um, we've had many students at the Museum of Flight and they've had fabulous experiences each year. So as we close, just some general information um, around attributes uh, of students who really thrive here. I get asked this question um, every year of who is big picture designed for? Um, who who does best at your school? Um, so it's definitely students that value a high degree of, of personalization and close relationships. So you're going to be known here. You're not just going to be a number. You can't hide in the back of the classroom um, or in large crowded hallways. Um, we know you. We care about you, um, and we're here to partner um, with our students and our families on this journey. Uh, our students work a lot with each other um, in these project teams, with clubs, uh, with leadership opportunities. Um, so students are committed to working with and learning from their peers, um, do exceptionally well here at our school. Uh, we want students to possess diverse ideas and interests and skill sets um, and bring that wonderful diversity to our campus uh, to help us all grow and learn. Um, and those who possess a strong curiosity and a willingness to explore new ideas, um, particularly about that college and career notion um, and life, like what's going to happen after high school. It's not just about graduation and reaching that point in time, but really preparing you to take that next step, uh, whatever that may be. So we do require students um, to engage in project based learning, uh, to work effectively in collaborative groups, and we help develop those collaboration skills with students. Uh, we want you to set and achieve goals through our learning plans. Um, to prepare and participate in those student-led conferences twice a year, uh, to be able to present your work through exhibitions that happen with classrooms, within classrooms, to engage in our advisory program and stay together with that advisory cohort uh, for three years in middle school, to work toward proficiency in our standards-based grading model. And so that's, we have to redo some work if we have to do some more learning um, and take a little bit more time until we can really be proficient on certain standards. We want students um, to engage and work alongside us to do that um, and um, to be with us to explore a variety of college and career opportunities. Um, transportation, it's a little different this year um, with the pandemic um, and the schedule, so we do have limited yellow bus transportation. Um, some years we've had very little. This year we actually have a little bit more. Um, but it really is quite limited. There's one yellow bus from each of the four attendance zones um, that is bringing students to International and here and the four comprehensive high schools to supplement some of the metro routes um, that are no longer running um, with the impact the pandemic has had. A lot of our students will have ORCA cards. They get those if you live outside of the mile walk boundary and they'll take the metro here. Our campus currently opens at 745 a.m. Um, our first period class for high school starts at 8 and it's 810 for middle school. Um, so we open a little bit before uh, our classes open um, to ease in that drop off loop here in the morning. And for middle school, there tend to be supervised uh, clubs or jubilee activities until 445 in the afternoon. And that's important for some families as you think about um, child care and work schedules um, and all of that stuff. 
Um, so enrollment, uh, we select 75 students in our sixth grade lottery. Um, we typically have more than 300 who apply and we'll take 75 divided up by the four attendance zones. So 25% of our students um, will come from each of the four geographic attendance zones in the district. For seventh through 12th grade, it's rolling admission. There's not a deadline for when to apply. Um, whenever you apply, you're just added to the next spot on our wait list for those grade levels. Um, our ultimate maximum um, enrollment and capacity would be no more than 500 students. So as you apply, that's an online process through the district website. The application is up and, and live right now. Um, if you don't have internet access and you need additional help with that, we can support that here in our main office at Big Picture and the central office um, at the ESC and the student placement office can support that as well. Um, the sixth grade lottery deadline is January 14th by 4.30 p.m. So to be entered into the lottery for sixth grade, it's January 14th at 4.30. Again, for seventh through 12th grade, if you're interested in applying, um, it's rolling admissions. You can apply anytime and you'll just be added next on the wait list. It doesn't matter within the January 14th time range for sixth grade when you apply, um, all of your names are thrown in um, together when we, we pull the numbers out um, to determine the order in which students are going to be admitted. So some lot of reminders, if you're current big picture family and you want um, a younger sibling to attend, you do have to apply by the January 14th deadline um, and be a resident of the Bellevue School District um, to get preference um, for admission in to sixth grade. If it's a late or incomplete application, um, it'll just be processed and added to our wait list and multiple applications um, from the same student will result in the applications being rejected. Um, these are district procedures around how the lotteries are handled um, for all of our school, all of the schools that have lotteries. Um, the actual lottery is held at the district office. It's not a public event, but there will be notification via email or phone call if there's not an email that's provided on the application in, in early February. Um, so we want to turn that around as quickly as possible to, to give you information if um, you have a spot at the school or if you're on our wait list. Um, you'll have a week to verify residency um, that you live here in the Bellevue School District um, and a week to commit uh, to coming. Um, so if you need some additional information from us, that's the time to reach out or to talk about specific needs of your child. Um, and if someone declines, we'll move the next person from the waitlist and the process starts all over that they'll be given a week uh, to verify residency and to ask additional questions if needed um, from our school staff. In the past, we have facilitated uh, campus tours pre-COVID, pre so we'll see how things are um, in March, uh, which is typically when we've done that, and if we're able to open up campus um, and have people come here for a tour of our school. Um, so as we close, just going over those critical programmatic attributes, we are seven year program. Um, the, the goal is to start in sixth grade and go all the way through to 12th grade and graduate graduate with us. Um, our advisory program and our commitment to being a very close knit community uh, fosters those academic relationships and those personalized experiences for our students. Uh, project based learning connects to the real world where students learn their academic content grow in their collaboration and communication and critical thinking skills. Our middle school provides the foundation for the awesome high school internship program um, for students to explore interest, to network um, and have mentorships by adults. Um, there's a lot of attention to developing these other skills, confidence, self-advocacy, leadership, um, students having ownership over their learning. There's frequent communication between staff and parents and students. Um, and we really value working with our families as partners. Um, so I look forward to having many of you join us in the fall and reaching out if there are questions. Um, that is it for our program tonight. Um, if there are questions that you have that have not been answered in the presentation, um, feel free to drop them in the chat, oh, I do see one. I'll just answer this verbally. What is the status of your campus renovation and any specifics of what that will entail and where classes will be held during the renovation if applicable? So we are just starting that.
project. Um, we were approved with the last bond uh, for a full renovation of our building, which is super exciting. Um, so we'll still be here um, at our Robinswood location across from Robinswood Park near Bellevue College, um, at least for the next year and a half. Um, we'll be finding um, our architects real soon um, and beginning that design process uh, with our community stakeholders and working on the permitting process. Um, after that year and a half of design work, if everything is going well at that time, the tentative date um, is the fall of 2023, um, to move to the Ringall location in South Bellevue, where we'll be most likely for two years, and then we'll be back here at our new building by 2025. Um, a lot of that is just, again, contingent on the design and the permitting process, um, and there'll be more details um, that we'll be working on in the next few months um, around transportation and uh, what all of those other things will look like when we do make that move um, to our temporary location. So as soon as we have all of that information, we'll push that out to our community. I know it's a big question um, on many people's minds these days, but we're excited um, to plan an amazing new innovative facility, the best here in Bellevue that'll support our amazing program. Um, any other questions? Again, feel free to drop them in the Q&A. We're here to answer anything that may be coming up for you or your students if they're with you. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and close this out for the evening. If there's something that you wish you would have asked, please don't hesitate to reach out to email me or give us a call here in the main office. 425-456-7800 is the main number. Um, Karen Pennywell is my office manager who's extraordinarily um, well versed in all aspects of our school, um, so she can answer a question if you prefer the phone. Um, I'm happy to answer any follow up questions via email, whether that's specifics about the lottery or components about our school. I thank you for joining us this evening. Have a safe um, holiday break over the next two weeks, and I look forward to seeing many of you in person in the fall. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.